Namo Adidafa. Good morning. Thank you for joining me for our daily practice check-in. Listen, listen, listen. This beautiful sound calls us back to our true home. The second mindfulness training. Aware of the suffering caused by exploitation, social injustice, stealing, and oppression. I vow to cultivate loving kindness and learn ways to work for the well being of people, animals, plants, and minerals. I'll practice generosity by sharing my time, energy, and material resources with those who are in real need. I'm determined not to steal and not to possess anything that should belong to others. I will respect the property of others, but I will prevent others from profiting from human suffering or the suffering of other species on earth. Our reading this morning is on the spiritual doldrums from Ajahn Tiradhamma's book, Working with the Five Hindrances. The doldrums can be a cause for spiritual lethargy, but they could also be a positive sign indicating that the practice is really working. It can seem as if nothing is really happening if we're still caught up in the spiritual materialism of ego values and waiting for some spiritual payoff. However, when the practice begins to work, it is working outside the normal framework of ego and its rewards. It's working behind the scenes at selflessness, undermining those ego values or unhooking ourselves from them. We no longer need a spiritual payoff for the ego. We have seen through its game. So rather than worrying that there is no progress in practice because we don't see obvious results, we appreciate that the practice has now actually progressed to a more refined level, where the doldrums are in fact an expression of more tranquility and subtlety in our practice. This may require us to reassess our priorities in spiritual practice, stimulating rewards or deeper peace. Or we may give more attention to the internal processes rather than external benefits. If we recognize that the doldrums may be due to our rigidity in following some technique, maybe we need to be more creative. The purpose of techniques is to help develop spiritual qualities. So what other ways can we use to develop them? Ajahn Chah never adhered to any specific techniques. He taught that there are all manner of skillful means, upaya, to use for the great variety of unskillful mind states. His watchword was, if it works, use it. Thus, by not adhering to any particular techniques, we can use them all as and when they are necessary. I think he knew how clever the self was at requisitioning anything to defend itself, even spiritual techniques. Also, even if we've had success with some technique, it will usually not work indefinitely because the nature of self changes. We need to keep one step ahead of the cunning ego. May all beings be well. May all beings be happy. May all beings be peaceful. Sadhu. 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 Thank you for joining me today.